All of Luther's energies were to be directed to becoming a teacher, a teacher of philosophy and the Bible. Was Luther being led in yet another direction? Dominating the skyline in Wittenberg was the castle of Duke Frederick the Wise, a man who would play an important role in Luther's life. Frederick was a devout churchman. However, a growing new spirit of nationalism in Germany caused Frederick to question the dominance of Rome and particularly the huge amounts of money being collected in Germany and sent to the Pope in Italy. Frederick had a dream. He wanted to make his castle church a center of worship to rival that of Rome. And to attract the people to his church, Frederick invested in an immense display of sacred relics. Then to promote his church, he printed this very catalog. It pictures various relics. One container was said to hold 13 fragments of Christ's manger. Frederick collected thousands of other treasures too. The people who viewed these relics and, of course, made a contribution to his castle church were assured they could escape as much as two million years in purgatory. To this, Luther could only say, who knows whether this is true. Luther began his career as a teacher by lectures on the Psalms. When he came to the 22nd, he encountered the verse, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Quoted by Christ on the cross. Luther was astounded. Christ forsaken. That's exactly the way I have felt, and I thought I was the only one in all the history of the world. But why? I am weak. I am sinful. He was not weak. He was not sinful. How then could it be? It could only be because he so identified himself with our sinful humanity as for the moment to feel himself on our side, even as over against God. What a different picture this is of Christ. He who was seen as the judge upon the rainbow, condemning, now has become the derelict upon the cross, redeeming. For Luther, the thought was well expressed by St. Paul in the epistle to the Romans, that we are not right with God by anything we can do, but only by our acceptance, our belief, our commitment, to God's holy, unmerited grace. And Luther said he felt through this insight as if the very gates of paradise were opened. Could this be true? Salvation is a free gift of God? The fear of God's judgment was replaced with the joy of God's forgiveness this new understanding of salvation would become the foundation of Luther's life. Luther shared his exciting discovery with his congregation here at City Church in the heart of Wittenberg. Salvation as a free gift of God through faith. It was a liberating new insight for many. But at the same time, some of Luther's parishioners were traveling to a church outside of Wittenberg, lured there by a flamboyant monk who was offering the traditional, and to some, a more understandable approach to forgiveness. This monk was selling pieces of parchment authorized by the Pope, which guaranteed forgiveness of sin. Such documents were called indulgences. Many monks were traveling across Europe selling indulgences. It was at this church that some of Luther's own parishioners heard the appeals of one such monk, John Tetzel. Tetzel harangued the people in this fashion. You are all on a tumultuous course and know not how it will end, but remember, if you have confessed your sins and have one of these indulgences, all of your sins will be forgiven. And think not just of yourselves. What about your dead relatives and your parents? 
now suffering the pangs of purgatory. Hear them say, pity us, pity us, pity us. Hear the father saying to his son, the mother and to her daughter, we brought you into the world. We nourished you. We nurtured you. We brought you up and we left you our fortunes. And do you care so little that you will leave us to be tormented by these flames? Now you people remember, as soon as the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Are you so mean that you will not give the quarter of a florin to enable an immortal soul to enter paradise? For Luther, the very idea of selling salvation was contrary to the Bible's teaching. Since Christ had paid for our sins through his death, indulgences were worthless and damaging to this fundamental understanding of Christianity. Concerned for his church, Luther needed to discuss this essential issue. He wrote an invitation in Latin so only fellow theologians might read it, and he posted it on the customary bulletin board, the door of the castle church. This invitation to debate became known as the 95 Thesis. On the last day of October, in the year 1517, Luther stood on about this very spot to nail his 95 theses on the door of the castle church. Not this exact door. The original was burned about 150 years ago, and in its place these bronze doors were substituted with the 95 theses inscribed in the metal. The immediate attack was on the practice of indulgences, whereby the Pope granted certain spiritual uh, benefits in return for contributions, which in this case were to go to Rome to build the Church of St. Peter's. Luther's comment was, if the Pope knew the poverty of the German people, he would rather that St. Peter's lay in ashes than that it should have been built out of the blood and the hide of his sheep. Now that was something to which every German would say, Jawohl. Yes, indeed. But the Germans have been complaining on this score for a hundred years. The second point cut a great deal more deeply because the Pope was believed to have the power to release from purgatory the souls of dead relatives, again in return for a contribution. And Luther's answer was, the Pope has no jurisdiction over purgatory. And if he does, he should empty the place free of charge. The controversial ideas of this obscure university teacher were soon translated